This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, any tips on modeling a gown or a skirt? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have the demo soldier here loaded in. And the question is asking about modeling a gown or a skirt inside a ZBrush, and if there's any good tips or tricks on how to do that. So if you think about the general shape of a gown or a skirt, it is basically cylindrical in design. So it usually starts around the waist of the character and then flares downwards. So the process I'm going to cover is using the curved bridge brush to generate geometry between two shapes. So the first thing I want to do is go to the subtool palette over here and I want to click the insert button here and I just want to insert in a plain 3D object. So after this is inserted, you'll see I have a new subtool that has been created directly under the subtool I had selected. The next thing I want to do is come to the top here and activate move mode, which is going to turn on the Gizmo 3D. I can then rotate to the side. I'm going to turn off perspective. And I just want to rotate this slightly, so about 60 degrees or so. And then I want to move that up and then scale it up a little bit so it's around the waist of the demo soldier here. So something like that. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to divide this up so it has a little more topology. To do this, I can go to the tool palette, I can go to the geometry area, and I can click the divide button here, or I can press Control D on my keyboard, and I just want to divide this up to around 66,000 points or so. After I've divided up, I want to come over here and I want to click Delete Lower, and this is just going to go through and delete my lower subdivision levels. So now I just have this tessellated plain subtool. So now with this subtool selected, I want to reset my alignment here because I want to create a localized duplication of that plain 3D. So I'm going to click the unlock button here. I'm then going to click the reset orientation option, which is now going to reset the gizmo back to ZBrush world space. Then I'm going to click the lock button again. Now I'm going to rotate to the side and I'm going to hold control and I'm going to click and drag. And as long as I don't have any subdivisions on my model, I'm be able to perform a local duplication of that subtool. So you can see now I have two planes in this subtool here. And if you come back up here, you can see this is still a single subtool. The second plane here, I want to scale this up a little bit, so something like that. So now I have these plane 3Ds here. I'm going to rotate that one on the bottom slightly. It's a little more flat. So I have one plane that's around the waist and then one that's a little bit below the knee. So now that I have my subtool created like this, I'm gonna activate solo mode here. You can see this is what I have. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna generate two masks. So I wanna generate a mask on the top here and then a mask on the bottom. So I'm just going to first navigate to the top like this. Then go back into draw mode here. I'm gonna hold down control, which is gonna be my masking pen. Well, I wanna change from the mask pen to something else. I'm gonna come over here and open this up and I'm gonna select the mask circle. This is now gonna give me a circle modifier for my masking. So now I can click and drag and this is now going to generate a circle mask. And I just want to position it like this and then release. So I have created a mask on one of these subtools here. Now you'll see, since I was in orthographic view, looking down from the top, that I also have a mask being applied to the bottom plane as well. So that's okay, I just wanna expand this out a little bit more, maybe add some little more kind of designs around the edges here. So I'm gonna hold control again, and I'm gonna change back to my mask pen. I'm gonna hit X on my keyboard to activate symmetry. And now I'm just gonna come across and add a little bit of ruffling to this bottom part here. And you can be as precise as you want in this. I'm just making this kind of a little different edge than the round one that I have at the top. You can hold down Alt to erase your mask as you do this. And you can just switch back and forth, and I'm just generating a little different shape, something like that. And then if you want this to taper out a little bit more, you can increase your brush size on your mask, and then come in and just expand it out some more. So maybe I want it a little bit wider than I had it. So just expanding this out. And you can really take your time and generate you know, the most precise shape as you want. This is just kind of the quick and dirty approach right now. So just coming through and adding some of this ruffling type effect here. So just holding Alt to unmask, and then releasing to remask. 
And so now I have that kind of effect there. Now after I have my two masks applied, so one applied to the top and one applied to the bottom, I now want to take the masking I have and I want to generate a new polygroup out of it. So to do this, you can just press Control and W on your keyboard, and this will now assign a new polygroup to that masked area. You'll see that after this happens, my masking will be cleared, but if I come over here and turn on my polyframes and then disable line, you can see that I now have two polygroups here established on my planes. I now just want to isolate the part in the middle, so I'm going to hold down Control and Shift and click the outer edge, and then click the outer edge again, and now I should just be left with this. Now I can go to the tool palette and go down to the geometry area, I'm going to modify topology, now I can do delete hidden, and that will now delete those unnecessary parts. And so now I have the top tool here and a bottom tool. If I kind of rotate around, you're going to see that they're single sided, so the top part and the bottom part here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the curve bridge brush to create a bridge from this part to this part of the bottom. But first, I need to make sure that when I do this, that I have this bottom part flipped. So I want the faces of the geometry here to be flipped so they're facing the other way. So I'm going to hold down Control and Shift and drag out a select rectangle brush around that bottom part. And so it becomes the only part visible. Then I'm going to navigate down to the tool palette, down at the bottom, and I'm going to go to Display Properties. And then in here, I'm going to click Flip, which is going to flip the normals of that tool there. And then I'm also going to turn on double so I can now see it with back faces. And then I'm going to hold Control and Shift and bring everything back. So now I have my top part and my bottom part. And my bottom part has now had its faces flipped. So the face normals are facing downwards. And then the top one is facing upwards. Now I can go back to the brush palette over here. And I'm going to select the Curve Bridge Brush. And with this brush, I want to start drawing out from my top shape here. And as I draw out, I want to hold down Shift, and this should now lock that curve to the edge border of that shape there. And then I'm going to repeat that process on the bottom. So drawing out, hold Shift, and that should now give me a curve around that open edge. And now when I release, it's going to now bridge those two parts together. So you can see after I have just performed that curve bridge, I'm now getting this effect on my model. So it's taken the curve around the first shape, and the curve around the bottom shape, and now generated geometry between the two. So now I can clear my mask, and then go up to the Stroke Palette, and go to Curve Functions, and delete the curves. And now I have this as my mesh here. I can deactivate Solo, and you can see now the Demo Soldier here has this nice skirt. At this point, the skirt is pretty dense, so you could come through and start sculpting this out. If you want to clean this up a little bit more, I can now go back to the Tool Palette here. I can open up the Geometry tab. And in here, I can run Z Remesher to kind of reduce the polygon count of the skirt here. I want to activate Keep Groups. So this is going to allow me to keep the polygroups for the top section and the bottom section of the skirt here, which is going to allow me to remove them later, and then I can add thickness to the skirt. So I'm going to turn Keep Groups on, and then I'm going to click Z Remesher to now process the skirt here. And then here's the result. So I'm going to turn off my floor and I'm going to click on Solo so I can just see the skirt by itself here. If you're going to use the skirt for 3D printing, you're pretty good at this stage. But let's say I want it to not look like a tree trunk, but rather more like a skirt. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift and just isolate the skirt area here. So this is going to hide those two caps. Then I'm going to go back to the Geometry tab and open up Modify Topology. I'm going to click Delete Hidden, which is now going to remove those points out of that surface there. So now I just want to add some thickness to this, and to do that I can use the Z Modeler Brush. So I'm going to navigate over to the brush palette over here, open this up, locate the Z Modeler Brush, and just select that. I'm now going to hover over a single poly on my mesh, and then press spacebar to go into the Z Modeler Poly Action menu. In here, I want to make sure my action is set to Extrude, and I want my target to be all polygons. Now after I have that selected, if I come across a poly here and click and drag, I'm going to perform the extrude action across all the polygons on this model here. And this is going to allow me to now generate thickness for the skirt here. So you can see after I have that process done, I now have thickness being applied across the entire skirt. So now I can turn off my polyframes. If I want to preview this with dynamic subdivisions, I can go to the geometry palette over here and turn on dynamic. And then I can turn off Solo, 
At this stage, you can now scale this with the Gizmo 3D as needed. So that's a little bit too thick there. So I can scale that down. I can move it around. I can then even come through with the move brush and just come through and start tailoring this a little bit better. But as you can see, with that process, I've now quickly generated this skirt type shape. So the process again was just to first create some plain 3D objects and then take those plain 3D objects and generate a start and end shape. And then you can use the curve bridge brush to generate a bridge between those two shapes, giving you a skirt effect. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.